Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about this recess bag. This is an example of a closed reservoir recess bag. Um, it's got what we commonly call a duck bill or a fish mouth. You can see right here at the patient connection, when I push the bag or I compress the body, you can kind of see that valve open up, looks like a bit of a duck bill or a fish mouth, um, hence the name. Um, what we're going to do is go through each component of this bag and how to assemble it. But before I do that, while it's intact, I just wanted to show you a few things about this patient connection. On the outside of this connection, it's a 22 millimeter outer diameter, and that's perfect to fit on your recess masks. Okay? So the 22 millimeter diameter would fit inside of the recess mask so that you can actually undergo your proper uh, CE grip and BVM your patient. On the inside of this uh, connector, it's a 15 millimeter inner diameter, which fits your endotracheal tubes. Okay. So you can, again, resuscitate and breathe for your patient when now they have an artificial airway in place. Okay. So now let's go ahead and talk about each of the components of this bag. Now we'll start down here first off with the reservoir. So like I said, this is a closed reservoir. This is an adult style bag. Um, you can see right on this reservoir, it tells us that it is a reusable 2.6 liter uh, reservoir. So there's an oxygen port here. You would connect your oxygen tubing to a flow meter. You run it at 10 to 15 liters per minute. Clinically, I'll be honest, I run mine at flush, uh, especially in the cases of a uh, trauma or um, cardiac arrest or VSA where I'm just worrying about getting ventilation and oxygenation to my patient. Um, this is where you would connect your oxygen source. That then would fill this reservoir bag using these one-way flap valves. Okay, so that directed gas would come back into this reservoir bag. And you actually want to visualize that this bag inflates. Okay? Um, as that bag inflates, these valves will help direct the gas flow with uh, another uh, disc membrane or an intake valve that's going to push that into the compressible body. When I squeeze on that compressible body, I should be already filled with oxygen from my reservoir and deliver that to my patient through the uh, patient connection. If I didn't have an oxygen source, one feature of these self-inflating recess bags is you can still ventilate. You can see right now I don't have a reset or sorry an oxygen source attached to this. Every time I squeeze the bag, if it's assembled properly, it reinflates, and I have the opportunity to at least uh, ventilate my patient with 21% or ambient oxygen. Okay, so that is one feature or, let's say, advantage of a self-inflating recess bag is that in a pinch, if you didn't have an oxygen source, you could use this with room air. Okay. Um, moving down, the compressible volume, or sorry, the compressible body will hold a certain amount of oxygen or tidal volume, uh, and it really it's going to depend on how much you compress that bag. Okay. Uh, typically, you're going to want to just be squeezing it so your fingertips touch. You don't mean you need to be too handy in this bag and collapsing everything into your uh, patient, but you're going to want to use your clinical skills and your bedside skills to watch for chest rise and fall and make sure you've got adequate ventilation using your monitors and uh, assessing your patient with auscultation. Continuing down, we've got the next step in line. There is a pressure, uh, inspiratory pressure limiter. Uh, this is just a spring-loaded valve that if uh, my patient's lung characteristics are, let's say, stiff or non-compliant, then um, I may need a, a, a large peak inspiratory pressure to generate a tidal volume. Or if there is an obstruction or something, this might alert you to a change in condition that is generating higher pressure as you're bagging. The way it will alert you to that is an audible sound. So you can hear that sound, and if you hear it while you're bagging, you know that you're hitting your inspiratory pressure limit. And you can also visualize, see if I can get this on the video, that spring lifting up. Now you might ask, what pressure is that at? Most of the manufacturers will write the pressure of that inspiratory limiter on the actual valve itself. So this one you can see pops off at 35 centimeters of water. Okay. Moving down from there, we've got our patient connection. So like I said, 22 millimeter outer diameter, 15 millimeter inner diameter. Outer di diameter is to be used with the BVM. Uh, inner diameter is when you've got an intubated patient. This is, a, again, that patient uh, valve is in the form of a duckbill or a fish mouth. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to take it apart and we're going to reassemble this.